Welcome back to The Morgan Show. I'm Sierra Burnett, and up first with football, they lost to the University of Albany 17 to 23. The women's cross country team won their meet at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, and later on, we will be featuring one of Morgan State's best defensive players, Eric Hunter. Let's get into it. The Morgan State women's cross country team captured its first meet of the season at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. The Bears won the soaring hot cross country classic held in Princess Anne, Maryland. Morgan won first place in the two-team event with four of its runners claiming the top four places. Abigail Fisher won the individual title with a time of 20 minutes and 40 seconds. In what was a thrilling and rain-soaked game, the University of Albany escaped Hughes Stadium with a 23-17 double overtime win over Morgan State on Saturday. Morgan rallied from a 10-0 deficit to force overtime. Still, the effort wasn't enough as the Bears were unable to secure the victory. They dropped to 1-3 this season. Reporter Lake Marion has more on the story. Each week of this football season has seemed to come with more hurt as Morgan finds painful ways to lose in close games. This time, the Bears lost to the Albany Great Danes 23-17 in double overtime. The Bears have now lost three straight games since their road victory over Richmond on September 2nd. There are glaring issues that the Bears need to fix, and all of them on the offensive side of the ball. In four games, the Bears' offense has scored 58 points total, averaging 14.5 points per game. Their opponents so far in those four games are averaging 19.25 points per game. Morgan's offense has struggled to score points in the second half. The offense is not able to get into the red zone often to go for touchdowns or attempt field goals. Head coach Damon Wilson elaborated on what the offense must do to get out of the mud. Uh, in order to win ball games, you got to stop the run and run the football. Uh, so it's going to be a must that we sustain our running game. Uh, you know, the weather wasn't the best last week. However, we don't make excuses. We did not do a good job up front uh, blocking uh, Albany. Uh, so therefore, you know, we had trouble in the run game. Uh, with that being said, we still had an opportunity to win the ball game. And, uh, you know, it came down to, to inches, really. And, uh, you know, we, we're, we're, we're headed in the right direction. The guys are still fighting. Had a good week uh, practice thus far this week. So I'm looking forward to the challenge against Yale. The Bears have struggled to run the ball effectively as they were outrushed 116 to 45. Running back J.J. Davis finished the game with negative six yards. Davis said the running game is already moving at a good pace, but they need to work on the smaller things to keep it going. I mean, we were we were knocking off big runs. It was just we were getting holding calls. We were doing a lot of stuff to set ourselves back. Like we probably had we probably had 100 rushing yards got called back just off holding. So I don't think it's necessarily the run game they need to get going. It's just a little thing like technique and stuff. Once we pick that up, everything will get rolling and we'll get on track. The pass run play calling is balanced, and so the Bears involve their receivers more against Albany. Wide receivers Travion Pratt and Demir Shipley combined for 92 yards and a touchdown. We asked Pratt to say what the offense needs to adjust as Morgan moves forward. Honestly, I feel like we actually are a good offense, like I said before. Only thing we just need is that little push and that little more integrity and, and into one another and be able to trust each other more. And our quarterback situation was like off, but we, we doing what we're supposed to do now. And we all connecting and doing everything right. Running backs doing their job, wide receivers doing their job. So mainly everybody just do their job and we gonna be good. The Bears will travel to New Haven, Connecticut to take on Yale University on Saturday, seeking to end their three game losing streak. Thank you, Lake. Morgan competed toe-to-toe -to -toe with MEAC defending champions Delaware State before falling 1-3 on Sunday afternoon in its home opener at the Hillfield House. The Bears dropped to 5-12 this season and are now 0-2 in the MEAC. Senior Mikayla Billingsley finished with 8 kills. Senior Gabriela Haciano had a total of 12 digs and junior Trinity Carruthers added 15 assists and 8 digs. The Bears traveled to Durham, North Carolina to face North Carolina Central on Friday and to Orangeburg, South Carolina to face South Carolina State on Sunday. Here's Kelsey Jones with more on the story. As the Morgan State women's volleyball team makes its way through the season, the wait to be great motivates players like an iPhone music playlist. With the completion of the non-conference schedule and added internal expectations, the Bears are contemplating what it will take to win a MEAC championship. Coaches and players considering changes like better communication and trusting in order to move through the conference with more wins. Their losses, however, have come in hard-fought matches. With so many close games turned to losses, Coach Seymour Ortiz tells us a little bit about what they are doing to overcome those moments of pressure in the game. 
A, it's us getting better at those pressure moments, and we talk about being in the red zone a lot, um, which comes down to the last five points. So, um, you know, we need to handle pressure better, and that's with a growing team, a learning team, so we know we're going to go through those bumps and bruises. Chemistry is the first step to building a winning team. I feel like our team chemistry is improving a lot. I feel like with our um, win to loss percentage and ratio this year, it's way better than last year. So I feel like we're having um, small improvements, but as a whole, I feel like we are growing collectively. I would say um, that the connections for sure. We've been kind of struggling with it a little bit, but we had the energy, but um, to, to go further in the conference, the connections is needed and the trust in our teammates. It's not an easy road ahead for the Bears, but they are making the changes they need to beat these bold teams and turn the season around. Thank you, Kelsey. Now we all know it's football season, but basketball season is slowly approaching. Morgan's head basketball coach, Kevin Brodus, did a lot of recruiting this summer as he brought in 13 new players. They officially started practicing on Monday and are getting ready for their season to begin in November. In an interview with Coach Brodus, he said, as my guy Dion would say, we're coming. Morgan State's men's basketball program is mourning the loss of Blake Bozeman, a former Morgan State basketball star who was shot and killed this past Saturday. Bozeman is the son of former Morgan State men's basketball head coach Todd Bozeman. Those close to the young Bozeman recalled his stellar career where he played from 2011 to 2015. They also remembered him as a family man and mentor who gave back to his community. Bozeman was determined to help young athletes and he invested in their futures after sports. He started the Pivot Group, whose goal was to encourage athletes to enter into business. Teammates and family members said his positive influence and selflessness helped inspire others around him to be better. Bozeman is survived by his three children and wife. For a year, we've wondered what wrestling would look like, and now we have a chance to see what the MEAC's only Division I wrestling program has to offer. Here's Brandon Henry with the report. After receiving a $2.7 million donation in October 2021 from HBCU Wrestling, Morgan State's men's wrestling team is returning after a 27-year hiatus. They're now the only D1 HBCU with a wrestling program. With the majority of the team being freshmen, many are unsure of what to expect. However, the Bears could not have found a better head coach with the hiring of Kenny Monday. Uh, most of the kids that we have on our team are freshmen, so we're young. And so just trying to get as much experience as we can this first year and, um, and just continue to build uh, on our program going forward. Coach Monday was the first ever black wrestler to win an Olympic gold medal. He's a three-time Olympian, National Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, and throughout his career, he's coached 30 national champions and 50 All-Americans. The freshmen have high hopes as they've been working extremely hard and they expect the work to show and to put the NCAA on notice. Uh, I think we're gonna start off pretty strong. A lot of people are underestimating a new team, but over here at Morgan State, we're working pretty hard to uh, be one of the top programs in the country. So. I'm excited and Morgan State fans should be excited as well. Put the NCAA on watch right now. So. They start competing against other schools November 5th. This season will set the foundation for many years to come. Eric Hunter's teammates call him E-40, like the West Coast rapper. He's not from the Bay, but he does make plays. This E-40 plays six instruments and is very musically inclined. I caught up with him this week to get a glimpse of his life off the field. Eric Hunter committed to Morgan State in 2021. He arrived from District Heights, Maryland, and almost immediately made an impact on the football field, collecting 36 total tackles as a freshman. He ended his sophomore year with 77 total tackles. Now in his junior year, he has 35 tackles through only four games. He leads the MEAC with 21 solo and 14 assisted. Hunter is fast, he's physical, and he's relentless. His style of play has set the defensive tone for the season. He won MEAC Defensive Player of the Week and Box Troll National Player of the Week after Morgan's upset victory over the University of Richmond on September 2nd. He's become the type of player offensive coordinators talk about in pregame meetings. Opponents make sure to account for number 40. He's living up to those expectations. However, we're going to continue to uh, you know, load him with information and, and, and uh, opportunities uh, to make plays so he can lead the ball club. Hunter first picked up a football when he was five years old. He saw his father's excitement about the sport on TV, and his curiosity led him to play with friends in the neighborhood. Soon enough, he asked for a helmet and what he called at the time a number shirt, hoping to impress his dad. I was kind of like, dang, like, what's this hype about? Like, why is he so excited at the TV? And then, you know, I kind of just fell in love with it too. 
understanding like how much it could change a life and just the fun. Hunter dedicated time to football, but it didn't consume his life. He made time for his other passions. He produces music and plays six instruments. I play the piano, the violin, the double bass, the stand-up bass. That's my main instrument, actually, okay. stand-up bass. I play the marching snare, marching tenor, and the marching bass drum. Hunter learned the violin in fifth grade, picked up the stand-up bass in sixth grade, started producing beats along with the piano in seventh grade. He's most accomplished in the stand-up bass. Toby Hunter, Eric's father, stoked his son's interest in making beats. Mr. Hunter, a former rapper, said YouTube tutorials didn't exist and it was important for him to build skills. Hunter's father provided all the necessary tools he needed to create original music. I actually had um, some friends who composed musical were producers and they came over a couple of times and gave him some tutorials and he took off with it. Producing beats is time consuming. Hunter spent hours in the studio, sometimes five, sometimes six, maybe even eight, pushing buttons and tweaking sounds. Usually when I make the melody, that's usually the part that takes the longest because it's like you gotta find like, the, like what, you, what you're thinking about. But once I finish the melody and I'm like going into the drums, Cake. Producing quality music is subjective. Hunter relies on his ears and his heart. The only thing that makes a good beat is how it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. As long as it makes you feel any kind of emotion, whether it just makes you bob your head or makes you want to cry, emotion. Eric Hunter carries the same emotional approach onto the football field. He's a ball of energy who explodes for tackles and sacks a six foot four, 210 pound middle linebacker making plays. He has grown into that role. Teammates call him a passionate and emotional leader. Coaches speak highly of his progress. Eric is a guy that, that uh, understands our defense. Uh, he plays with a lot of passion. He's a guy that spends a lot of time in the coach's room, uh, studying film and preparing for games. The Bears face Yale this weekend in New Haven, Connecticut. They hope the defense, led by Hunter, continues to dominate opponents. They own the MEAC's top defensive unit, holding teams to 19.3 points per game. Hunter is averaging two and a half sacks per game. He has six tackles for loss, and along with Noel Washington and Jordan Tolles, has been a major disruptor this season. He plans to continue to apply pressure. Next up, we have Lakes Takes. Lake, as you saw this past weekend, we suffered a heartbreaking loss in double overtime, losing 17-23 to 23 to University of Albany. What were your overall thoughts of the game? Well, Brandon, my overall thoughts of the game were, I think that they just need to, they got to get it done. You know, they had a tough time scoring, got to the one-yard line, and just couldn't punch the ball in. Had a lot of miscues, a couple of penalties here and there, but they just got a lot of things to fix, especially offensively. Most definitely. What were your takeaways from the game? So my takeaways were this. First, I think that the team has been playing to the level of their opponent. Uh, despite, you know, being, or despite falling to one and three this season, the Bears have not been blown out in any of their games. Uh, you, maybe you could argue the Towson game, but that was only a 10-point loss. But other than that, they've been playing really good against the, the teams that they've been up against so far. Richmond, Akron, and now even uh, University at Albany. All, their games, all those games are decided by one score with only that one game against Richmond that they ended up winning. Um, I also think that, number two, uh, they just couldn't get the ground game going, couldn't run the ball uh, as well as they wanted to. The Bears offense finished with a total of 45 yards on Saturday, and the run game just wasn't effective this weekend. I know it was raining, but you would think that getting the run game going during the rain would actually be the one thing that they would do really well. But uh, they had to rely on the passing game this week, and they succeeded in that, but they still got to find out a way to get, get the run game going. J.J. Davis only finished with negative six yards, unfortunately, so there was that. Um, Defense just can't do it all every game. That's another thing. Once again, the Bears threw four quarters. Defense did everything that they, did, that they could to keep the Bears in the game. And the offense just got to find ways to generate points. They, they couldn't get into the red zone often. And whenever they did, they either took like a sack or had too, way too many penalties. And speaking of penalties, that's my fourth take. The Bears were penalized 11 times for 95 yards. Had one holding penalty late in the game where they had J.J. Davis actually have that one, one really good run for 33 yards, but they got called back because of a hold. Uh, all those holds and, and the penalties, it, it all leads to miscues at the end of the day. And even in the fourth quarter, you know, they got that one fumble um, 
uh, in, in the, uh, for the defense. They got the fumble, picked it up, and couldn't run it in. So there was also that. And then lastly, it's a game of inches. It doesn't matter if it's from the one yard line or from the 50. If you can't, if you can't punch the ball in from the one yard line, the offense just got, they got to get it, they got to get it together, man. It's just, you know, they were on, they were on Auburn's one yard line. They were right there, had four opportunities, and they ended up getting a, a penalty on, on third down, running back five yards, couldn't punch it in. Thanks, Lake. Now back to you, Sierra. I'm Sierra Burnett, and for all of us here at The Morgan Show, thank you for watching. Tell my story across the world, look, mama, I'm doing it right. Yeah, I'm a man, but I still cry, and it's hard to sleep right at night. See, I'm a soldier, and I'm getting closer to the life that I like. Cause we getting older, life getting shorter, I'm married to match my off-white. Uh, really living a movie, you ain't me, so I don't care what you used to.